All right, so let's go over the um, – I want to go over the setup. We just had to trade here a second on that NASDAQ futures, but I want to go over it. Let's go back to yesterday, and then we'll go uh, we'll go in today. So there's a specific uh, setup that I love to look for, okay, in the market. We just had one that fired just now on the NASDAQ futures. Here, I'll just show you. Let's look on the what's, fight, what's running live right now. We just had one, one just fired on NASDAQ futures. Okay, so we all know once we get a trend change, we're looking for a full retracement up to the zone. Now, this is my, this is the, um, this is the NASDAQ futures. A lot of traders use the 25, 30, or 35 on the NASDAQ futures. But you want to look for a full retracement, right? So here, here's a setup I really love, and I sent out a lot of charts or Gerald sending out a lot of charts uh, with examples on this and how to do this today to all you members. Um, so look for that in your emails. I sent it like I, I think like 10 or 15 charts out on this. So once you get a full retracement, okay, I'm going to show you how you can look for weakness in the market. I, I like this combo. I like I like when we get a full retracement and we get the arrow that fires. But when, you, when you're coming up to the second arrow, this is the sweet spot in the setup. When you're coming up to the second arrow, watch for a lower high, a lower high arrow or a lower high in price action. When that second arrow fires, if it's a lower high and you get a Momo, you got yourself one potential nice move to the downside or vice versa to the upside. Because what you're doing is you're qualifying it at the zone. You got a rejected FZR, full zone retracement. And then you also get a lower high when the second arrow fires with the oscillator staying below 80%. If you would just trade this specific setup and cookie cut this every day on any market, watch your accuracy. Because what happens is that you're letting price action show weakness or strength based upon a lower high or higher low when the arrows fire again. And you're also letting the oscillator show weakness or strength. So this combination of seeing lower high arrows works really well, but you need to come into a full retracement with the oscillator going into Momo the second. Now, I get this a lot. Do we have to have price action hit the full zone retracement into a MOMO? Not with this specific setup. Yesterday with CPI, the market was really, really volatile. Okay? We rallied hard. We hit my 4150 number, my daily and weekly target. We've been talking about that target for over one month in the room now. And we said if we come up, to 41.50, we're looking for that market. I'm looking for that market to correct. And I sent this out on your charts, out in the mail. I said, if we come up to this 41.50, look for the market to correct. Look where we hit yesterday. The high was 41.55 before we change over to the new contract. 41.50 weekly target. The high on the December contract was 41.45. Absolutely nailed the high. If you, that's the weekly chart. That's what we talked about. When we were down here at 39.80, we talked about it over and over again, how a lot of traders were looking to short 41.50. The high of the day was 41.45. Same thing happened over here on my rejection at that level. So we pretty much had that down. When it hit up there, all these FZRs and all these um, – Momo trades really kicked in really good. So it's kind of neat how we had weekly and daily confirmation. We anticipated that. But watch for this setup because look. Look how you come into a full zone retracement. You get above 80. You start rotating down, getting away from the rejected zone. You get that next retracement. And when that next arrow fires, if it's a lower high, that shows weakness. And if your oscillator is below 80 on the retracement, right, you've got to stay below that red, then now you're double weakness. 
So what I'm saying is, is you can look at lower highs or higher lows with the arrows to qualify weakness or strength. And that, this combination is very, very powerful. So if you use, let it come into a full zone, or even not a full zone, you just want a lower high with the Momo next. Okay? So let me show you. The S&P did it all day yesterday. It was just beautiful trading. So here's an example how you had a full retracement. It's not an FZR because it never got in our zone, but this is a full retracement. It goes into a lower high when the next arrow fires, and consequently, it's a Momo. This is a beautiful combo setup. Right there we are again. Watch how this repeats on a daily basis over and over and over and over again. It is a beautiful combination. Then we come up into the zone. Now this is an FCR, a full zone retracement, because it's above 80 at our, at our inside our zone. And then what happens is we come down, we come back up, we set a lower high when the next arrow fires. I'm actually programming this in our strategy that you're going to be getting on the update. It will only take lower highs or higher low arrows that are back-to-back -back on a toggle switch, if you like. If you only want to take lower highs or higher lows, this combination, it will only take these trades. But this combination right there, again, lower high, oscillators below 80, there we go again. Same exact setup. So when you're looking for this combo, it doesn't have to be in the FCR if this is a lower high with that Momo after the full zone retracement. The best are in the FCR, the full zones. But that is a combination that we want to see right there. Lower high on cells into an FCR, into a Momo. Into an FCR, into a Momo. Right? So remember this combination, FCR into a Momo with a lower high. Now for buys, we'll look for a higher low and look for an FCR into a Momo. If you've been trading the system on your own computer, you've probably seen this setup happen over and over and over and over again. It's one of the most reliable setups we have in the room. The combination of FCR and Tomomo is already reliable enough. Now you add the lower high end, it creates weakness. Or you add in a higher low for buys, it creates strength by itself. But then you add the arrows and the FCR and Momo and you got yourself a great combination. All right, there's Momo, there's the FZR. The key is if it sets a higher low though, it's not showing it should it's not showing great price action, right? So you're not looking for a really weak Momo to get rolling because it's setting a higher low in a downtrend, or vice versa. If it's going down, I mean up, you don't wanna you don't wanna a, a lower low, right? You want a higher low. All right, so that's the combination we want to see right there. We want to see that combination. All right? This is it ES? I'll put the ES down. I'll say this. I'll send these out to you. I already sent a lot of pictures out already to you guys on this. But I think that will help you recognize the setups, especially if you don't like taking FCR trades, only Momo trades, I'd only look for this combination. If you just like strictly trading fast price action, even on the longer time frames, and you don't even trade the FCRs because they're reversals, you know, you're looking at a vertical top, I mean a V top, V bottom, this is a combination that I would look for on any Momo setup. Okay, so let's look over here too on the NASDAQ futures. So this morning, what we just had a second ago, we had the FZR that came into the full zone retracement. You can see price action is ticking right now. 
Right now, we're going into a full zone retracement, FCR, almost a Momo. It's price action showing weakness right now. But it just this trade just happened. It's an FCR, full zone retracement. And also, what I did is I sent you guys out the first hour of price action after the CPI was very volatile yesterday. I sent you the 20, the 25, the 30, and the 35 Rico out. The reason I did that, I want you to see it, print them out, and compare when these combinations come up. Some of you want to only trade off the larger combination, larger time frames to take less trades. Some of you want to trade off the smaller time frame, less trades. So it's totally up to you how you want to do it. You know, but what's neat about this setup is this. Is you notice the FZR is forming over here, right? So in, instead of getting taking a shot on the FZR, if you want to see strictly weak price action and you want to get with the momentum of the market, then you can wait and see if this sets a lower high and then gets a MOMO. And if it doesn't set a lower high, right, if it doesn't set a lower high, lower high, then you don't take the setup. It's a really neat combination how to trade this. One second. So if you notice here, with price action, I'm going to have to set a lower high. Right now, it's just sitting a lower high. Right now, it's sitting a lower high. There's your lower high. It's got to show me an arrow right now to print. And this, this oscillator right now has to stay below 80. So let's watch this. It's setting up for a short right now. If this sets a higher high, like this, before the arrow, then you're not going to get the weakness like this to trade this setup. You're not going to get any momentum. But if I get this to roll over here and print an arrow, I have set a lower high. Right? And then you have a viable short setup. It's just a real neat way how to trade these arrows when they fire on Momo trades and FZR trades. All right? And this happened all day yesterday on the S&P. Let's find a buy real quick. Well, here's another example. So here yesterday at 10 o'clock, I went into a full retracement, right? So here, I like these setups. This is what I specifically look for. I look for a full zone. Then I look for a lower high into a MOMO. Full zone, lower high, momentum is really kicking in now. There's your MOMO, and look at the market crash. That market went from all the way down from 76 S&P down to 51. You know, we're talking about over 20 S&P points, 80 ticks. Here again, here's your retracement. Here's your lower high. The market gets cranked, right? So let me find a buy setup for you real quick. Here we go. We come into a full retracement, full retracement FCR into a higher low. That is a buy setup Momo. FZR into Momo oscillator stays right at 20. There's your buy setup. So if you don't want to try to take these FCRs and try to catch that zone trade, and you only want to trade momentum trades, look for that second FZR. Look for full retracement first. Another thing I put in the strategy update that you guys are going to be getting is this. Wave one. Wave one after a trend change. Here's your trend change. Red to green zones. It will take only first retracements. And first retracements work amazing <laughs> on the longer time frame for you guys that have the system. Look at the longer time frames on the first retracement after a trend change. It's pretty pretty incredible, the accuracy, right? The accuracy is, is, is really incredible. When, when you get stops on this, when you do get stops, the the moves on the winners are so 
uh, large, meaning they got such big opportunity for the upside that when you do get stops on these, they're very small con uh, comparison to the possible trend move up or trend move down. This is called a first retracement trade after a trend change. All right. So here we go again. This is 833. Another thing. If you trade news events, and this is very important if you're going to trade the system, this right here on the ES is a what? A 12020. I love this chart. Or you can trade a 12525, whatever you guys want to do. If you trade news events, you want to wait for this system three minutes after news. What I'm finding is when I'm running these algorithms, the algorithms start picking up the trades exactly three minutes in into after the news. It is too volatile for it to pick up any trades from 8.30 to 8.33, from 10 to 10.03, from 2 to 2.03. Right at 8.33, which was here, was right here, you want to start looking for setups. Three minutes after any news, CPI, unemployment, PPI. Three minutes, let it oscillate and gyrate around. Once again, here's my full zone retracement, my FZR right after news yesterday. This is the 12020. It set a lower high. I got my Momo. Right there's my Momo. And there you go. Another opportunity where she got cranked to the downside. Okay? So, those are great opportunities. Then, is first trade retracement. So, on the, on the strategy also, you have first trade retracements. Let's go to a larger time frame, for instance. If I go to a larger time frame, let's go to a, a lar let's go to a 35-35. A let's go to 35. Let's say you just want to trade a couple setups during the day. You can change your time frame to higher. See, it caught this one. I only had one trade so far this morning. Got that nice short. Got that nice long. See after news here. Caught that big short. Hold on one sec. Caught that big short here. Caught that short. Caught that long. Caught that long. All right, here we go. So even if you trade off larger time frames, it's still the same concept. Here's your FCR. Here's your lower high. There's your Momo, right? Because FCR, full retracement. It's an FCR arrow. There she goes. And this is, like I said, as, as a big one, 89 down to 67 on that one. You had over 20 points of potential, over 80 ticks of potential. But this is the kicker. On larger time frames, the first retracement typically is a potentially big move. This first retracement is potentially a big move. So you can put this in your strategy and saying, hey, trend change, especially after news. It happened right at 8.33, this happened. And the market just got cranked. I mean, I'm talking that sell signal from 4104 potentially all the way down into 67. So it just got smoked. But the first retracements are really nice setups on larger time frames. All right. So that's something you guys can also do. Listen, I sent you the charts out. If you're going to trade these markets on the S&P, 20 through 35. I wouldn't go any larger than 35, but here's 30. I'll just show you the difference. I'll be done in one second, Gerald. I'll show you the difference in price action after news, just so you get an idea. Is you don't want to trade too small a time frame because if you trade too small a time frame, you're going to get too many signals. So after the news came out at 8.30 yesterday, here we go again. This is the 130.30. It's really smooth. Look at that signal. Nice smooth signal. Smooth signal on the 130.30 on the S&P. Smooth signal. Another smooth signal. Smooth signal. Look at this. Look at the first. Remember I said 
Remember what I say on larger time frames. That's why I put this in the strategy. The first retracement arrow after a chin ch trend change could be a big one. Look what happened on the buy setup. Look at that trade. Trend change. Arrow. Momo. That potentially was 30, 83 and 3 quarters to 13. All right. Almost 30 ticks of potential. That's a 130.30. So when you're doing this, guys, pick which time frame you're comfortable with. This is the first hour of trading. I'll skinny this down on larger time frame. Here's the first hour of trading after news. You don't have to. If you trade a small time frame, you're going to pull your hair out. You can't find these inflection points. This is where traders fail. Traders fail because they think they can trade these small time frames. And they think that they can just trade a small Renko or a small tick chart or a small chart and, they, and they're and they going to get a good price action. No. You need to tr look at these larger time frames to set it up. Even if you trade off smaller time frames, let the larger get going in the direction of your move. Right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for seven in the first hour of trading after the largest potentially most volatile market that we've seen with the CPI yesterday and unemployment Friday. Right? Because if you go break this down, now I show the 12020, but if that's too fast for you, go to 13030. I would not go above a 13535 though. The signals don't very rarely come up, your stops are too big. But if I go to 12020, Still good price action, you just get more arrows, right? By skinning this down, see, we're just going to get more arrows, right? But what happens if you go to 113.13 and you say, hey, you know what, Jay? I'm just going to trade off a of 113.13. That's fine if you're a scalper, but you better just be a scalper. You better not look for any big moves in the S&P because if I go in the first hour of trading after the CPI then, on a 113.13, look at the price action. You get a lot of arrows. Did they catch them? Yes. But look at these arrows you're getting. You're getting tons of them, right? Getting tons of arrows. See the difference? Big difference. All right? That's how we can trade different large or smaller time frames on the Rinkos to adjust to your trading style. I tell traders anywhere between 20 to 35 if you're trading the S&P or the NASDAQ futures. I like 30 on the NASDAQ futures myself. A lot of traders trade the 35 or 25. I think 20 is too small in the NASDAQ futures. The larger you go on the NASDAQ futures, I think it's better because it's fast market. So. 30 or 35, but this is how you want to do it, okay? Always keep your stops in. Remember, keep your stops in above the swing. The stops have to be in above the swing high. So hold on one sec, Gerald. If you're trading the 113.13, that tells you that you got to let that thing breathe at least 13 ticks. You have to let it at least breathe 13 ticks minimum then I always add five ticks on top of that. So if you're trading the micros, the micros, you don't take a lot of heat because they're one-tenth of the big contract. That's why you can have larger stops. So if you're trading the micros, then you put an 18-tick stop. If you trade the 20, it should be a 25-tick stop. Trade the 30, it should be 35. Trade the 35, should be 40 on the micros to let it breathe. Or... Let the larger time frame start rolling over. Confirm it with the smaller time frame entry. Arrow to arrow. All right, Gerald, good shut that off, bud.